Good evening and welcome to another show. Today's guest, he's been here before. He's a badass. Claudio Bergman, how are you, brother? Nice to see you again. Thanks Man. for having me. Oh, thank you for being here today. How have you been? I've been good. How's good. the pandemic with you? Are you well, glad you're out about? Uh, well, if it wasn't for some of the businesses closed, I wouldn't I wouldn't have noticed mm -hmm. because I, I work from home. So mm -hmm. uh, so it's been good. I've been I've been busy. Wife's good? Yeah, wife's good. Hello, Louisa, wherever you are. I love. So, you know, let's let's get into what you do. And, you know, you're a fabulous artist. Um, oh, thank you. You know, how did, how did you really get into what you're doing with sci-fi? Because that's sort of like it emulates you to a certain extent, mm -hmm. many different levels. So how did that happen? Well, that just happened organically because I've been in, interested in that subject since I was a, a kid. Mm -hmm. So, and um, I've been doing... Uh, what I do long enough to just started indulging myself in the stuff that I, I like. Mm -hmm. Before that, it was I was just uh, doing commissions. That was it. I mean, a hundred percent of everything I did up until three or four years ago was just commissions mm -hmm. stuff. You know, people would call me to do. So, but uh, three or four years ago, so I decided to start. You know, uh, working on stuff that I'm interested in mm -hmm. and paranormal. You, you, ufology, UFOs, and and all of that, it just came naturally. Mm -hmm. You know, it was mm -hmm. a natural thing for me. Mm -hmm. It's it was that your imagination because you have some really interesting things about UFOs. Tell me about that. Well, yes and no. Mm -hmm. um, uh, most of the illustrations are based on actual cases, you know, events that actually happened. So in some cases, I have the the privilege to actually talk to the to the witness, or some cases, a celebrity. Mm -hmm. A lot of the, a lot of the people who, well, not a lot, but some of the people who have uh, have had this kind of experiences, have become a little bit of legendary, like mm -hmm. Travis Walton and, and Bob Gimlin. Mm -hmm. So, um, in those two cases, I had the chance to to talk to talk to both of both of them, Bob and and, and Travis, mm -hmm. to you know get firsthand information about. The, uh, the events mm -hmm. and just get everything uh, as accurate as possible mm -hmm. for the illustrations. But that was just my, me uh, interested in, mm -hmm. in their stories. Mm -hmm. uh, no one commissioned that for me. So, mm -hmm. And uh, but right now I'm actually working on more illustrations for Travis because he's uh, working on an expanded edition of his book, Fire in the Sky, yes. in which the movie is based on. Mm -hmm. So he, he wants to uh, remove some information that is obsolete. For instance, there was this uh, um, famous UFO skeptic that would show up in, in, in TV news uh, programs. I, can't, I guess his name was uh, Phil Class, I think. His last name was Class. And uh, it was a shady character, to say the least. So he wants to remove that guy from the book because he's not relevant anymore. Mm -hmm. Most of the people nowadays wouldn't remember him anyway. Mm -hmm. it's, this is from like 20, 30 years ago. Mm -hmm. So he wants to remove some things and update some others with, uh, you know, relevant information that uh, to the story. And he also wants completely new set of illustrations to mm -hmm. the book. So I'm doing that. Wow, that's that's awesome. So when you've talked to somebody that has been in contact with an alien or a person from not our world, what what is the feeling that you get between, like, say, Travis or Bob? What you know, what is what's that feeling like when they're talking to you? Because I know you're deep into that. So what what does it feel like when? Well, what do they say? There's something well, special, obviously. Well, yeah. I mean, obviously, you're you're in a special place if you're talking to either of them. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, the first time I met them, I I was already aware of most of their stories. I mean, uh, I just got deep into the the details mm -hmm. just for the sake of the illustrations. Like, uh, for instance, uh, what colors 
where the horses, Bob and, and Roger Patterson were riding that day in Northern California, mm -hmm. um, what they were wearing, you know, either jeans or, you know, mm -hmm. cowboy shirts. So, well, those kind of things. The rest I was pretty much aware of, and the rest is just a matter of watching the film, that mm -hmm. famous 60 millimeter film they did. Mm -hmm. So, um, I feel privileged, and uh, also, um, well, just talking to them gets me all, you fired know, up, fired, uh, up. fired up mm -hmm. to just to go back to my studio and started drawing, you uh -huh. know. So I guess enthusiasm would be the word. Yes, <laughs> yes. So you you know, uh, you, let's talk about your concepts. Your 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 work is so real. How do you? It looks real. It looks like the when you see a picture or a work that you've done, it looks like it's just coming right at you. How do you do that? Uh, well, how did you figure out how to do it? Like <laughs> it took you time. Do? Yes. I just, uh, I, I've seen some of the stuff. Just recently, I started digging into my archive, uh, just looking at stuff I did like 20 years ago, and I was like, oh, shit, I was bad. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, really, yeah, really. Yeah, not liking what, uh, you know, uh, my skills back then. So mm -hmm. it's it's been, you know, I mean, like any other skill, you have to work at you, it. You have to work on it. Talent mm -hmm. just can, can get you so far. Right. I mean, if, and, th and this can be applied for anything, sports, mm -hmm. science, music. or music, or, or art, yes. or any type of art. Yes. Uh, talent just can get you so far. So far, either to uh, get proper training mm -hmm. or just start working by yourself. And by working, I mean really, really working. You have to get up in the morning, just work a certain hours a day. Mm -hmm. Just like an instrument, you have to practice. Every day. Every day, yeah, every uh, at day. least a couple of hours. Yes. Well, uh, art is the same, so uh, I got better. <laughs> oh, <most laughs> and, uh, yeah. And um, I'm actually my worst critic. Mm -hmm. I just I. You seem to be. You seem I, I, yeah, You're I mean, perfectionist. When I when I see my stuff, I only see the flaws. Especially in the some some illustrations, I just I, I can't stand to watch anymore because I see the flaws. But they're out there. Everybody knows them, so I can't really go back and change them. I've done to some of them, mm -hmm. the less popular ones. Yes. I just took them out of the website a long time ago, waiting for people How to funny. forget about them, yeah, yeah. and then just redo them and just present them again. And some people might remember them. Oh, didn't you post that like 10 years ago? Yeah, yeah forget about it. Forget about it. <laughs> it doesn't exist anymore. Yeah, that's funny. So um, what is your day like? You said you work, you've been working uh, every day since the pandemic started and mm -hmm. we could now pass that out how, how what what is your day like you start you just all uh, day or you take breaks no or? i take a lot of breaks mm -hmm. yeah I'm, mm -hmm. I'm, a, I'm a master procrastinator mm -hmm. so um I that's wake, great a master procrastinator that's <laughs> yeah. good i i wake up in the morning i usually jump in the treadmill mm -hmm. and uh good for you mm, just check social media while in the treadmill mm -hmm. or watch a silly comedy mm -hmm. that's what of i course. do and then uh, just get off the treadmill, take a shower, and then I go to the studio and just I usually have to write uh, a list of tasks for the day, otherwise I get sidetracked very easily mm -hmm. or get just too focused on one of the tasks, mm -hmm. just forgetting I have, that I have three more. Mm -hmm. So that's usually what I do, and then I try to complete the tasks mm -hmm. before, you know, six or seven when my wife mm -hmm. gets home and then we'll... Uh, to me, that the sic that's the sacred time of the day yes I like to you know cook and have dinner that's untouchable you know mm -hmm. so we both have to stop working and just listen to music and just prepare dinner be, be together yeah and be together that's that, important that good to time oh most yeah. definitely that keeps your marriage also mm -hmm. Travis Walton you talked about him mm -hmm. that was interesting so when you met him you met him you, you've been with uh, book signings with him too haven't you and your own artwork uh, well conventions He's, oh, it's a convention. Yeah, not exactly book signings because they're not in bookstores. But um, we did uh, a few conventions. We did uh, we did uh, AlienCon twice, and we did the MUFON symposium mm -hmm. in in uh, Reseda. No, not Reseda. Uh, well, we got um, some city south of LA. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, Irvine. Okay. That's it. Okay. Irvine. And uh, so he's selling books, and I'm selling uh, art prints. And how how do they receive? How do the people receive your artwork? Oh, they like it. Yeah, they like I it a lot, so, and huh? especially uh, 
you know, being out in conventions with Travis, which we're going to do pretty soon, mm -hmm. uh, just to promote the, the new version of the book, mm -hmm. uh, it's it's insane because Travis's table it's always packed. You get a line of people waiting to meet him, and uh, it always uh, surprised me. It still surprised me to this day how patient he how patient he is mm -hmm. because he answers the same question over and over and over and over. So how was it like to, to see those aliens face to face? And he has to explain because that person, you know, came a long way, just maybe drove hours to just to meet him, to, just to meet him. And um, he just tell the story one more time for that one person and uh, take the picture and uh, sign the book. It's remarkable how patient he is. I don't know if I would be able to do it. So I just stand there like a fly on the wall and uh, because those people are not there for me they're uh, there for him mm -hmm. i just uh, they're tagging uh, i'm tagging along uh -huh. just lucky enough to you know being allowed to uh, tell the story through art and mm -hmm. i can sell it in conventions i just feel very lucky you're very lucky to be mm -hmm. with somebody like that so you're actually doing the, the illustrations in the book the new book that's yeah. going to be coming out the same ones i'm I have on my website, they're going to be on the book. Are and they plus, a few new ones that I'm doing, uh, especially for the book. Yeah. And you did, uh, on uh, Fire in the Sky, there's also a t-shirt that you got. Oh, yeah. I like that. <laughs> That's really cool. Yeah, it's, I think it's almost <coughs> sold out. How much? It th it's almost sold out. Oh, God. I have like three great. or four left. <laughs> yeah. it's, it's absolutely great. So, let's talk about another thing that you really enjoy. Bigfoot. Oh, yeah. How did you, the what made guy. you go right there? Same thing. Bigfoot? I've always been interested. When I was a kid, I used to watch In Search Of with oh, Leonard Nimoy. Oh, yes, yes. Which was a rerun. It was a rerun because I think that shows from the 70s, right? So I, I watched it in the 80s mm -hmm. when I was like 10, probably a rerun. And I remember those were my favorite episodes, the UFO episodes, Bigfoot, Ghosts, Ghost. Loch Ness Monster. I was fascinating. Fascinated, sorry, with uh, those subjects because, you know, in this day and age that it seems like everything is discovered, we need mysteries. You, we need uh, to keep to keep people's uh, attention to legends alive. Yes, you know. Yes, keep it alive. Keep it alive. So, did you watch that in Chile? The the yeah really dubbed dubbed. And the funny how thing was, how was that with with Leonard Nimoy? Well, know? that's this is a funny thing. The guy who dubbed him. Yeah. probably a Mexican actor, mm -hmm. was the same voice of uh, Star Trek. So you would see uh, in search of with Mr. Spock's voice, which all makes sense, right. but you wouldn't think about that when you're thinking of watching it in mm -hmm. Spanish, right? Mm -hmm. But it was the same voice. It was natural. It's just, well, oh, it's the same guy, same voice. <laughs> so when, you, when, when you're going about your business at home, doing what you're doing, what, is, what, what are you looking for? What are you trying to... Um, Okay, we'll do this. You did some albums. You did a lot of album covers. Mm -hmm. You make their concept. You talk to the artist. How is that? How does that evolve? How does do they tell you how they want it, or is it comes out of your out of your creative mind? Uh no, 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 no. They only contribute. You mean with Travis and, and Bob? Yeah, no, yeah, with and uh, with Travis and Bob, that comes out of your mind. But when you're doing albums, oh, how does that happen? How do, does the artist say something to you? Well, yeah, it depends on the project, actually. Mm -hmm. If it's commercial art, which is mainly what I do, mm -hmm. uh, they usually come with a concept. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, years ago, I, I usually, I used to just do whatever they want me, wanted me to do because mm -hmm. I was, you know, needed to just build up and get credibility, pay your dues, right? Yes, yes, exactly. So I would do whatever, you mm -hmm. know, and even silly ideas, I would do it. You get paid, you don't care, mm -hmm. right? But nowadays, I care a little bit more about that, so I have to agree with the concept. Mm -hmm. And uh, and most of the time, I would say 60% of the time, they come to me with good ideas, and mm -hmm. I would just do it the way they want them. But there's a percentage of them that they're kind of some, somebody might come with a silly idea, and I'd, how how do you say that to a client? That I don't want to I don't want to do this. Mm -hmm. It's silly. Right. So I try to just. Um, suggest, uh, propose mm -hmm. either something to keep the idea and make it more interesting, 
not silly. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and some of them might agree. The ones who don't agree, I guess we, we can't work together mm -hmm. because I don't want to do this. Mm -hmm. But uh, it's usually for the client and uh, keep them informed throughout the process. How is it going? And, um, and, and then when we deliver it, uh, we might touch it up here and there mm -hmm. to, mm -hmm. you know, either, you know, I like that cloud or could you change that color, it's too bright or mm -hmm. minor changes like that. And, um, but I would say mostly like 50% of the time, it's my idea how to uh, show it. Mm -hmm. Because I usually get a te text description mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. of what they want, what they not, want. Not, a, not a drawing. Mm -hmm. So I have to interpret the text. Mm -hmm. So I would say if it's 50, 50%. When, you, when you're doing that and you're actually starting to create their concept that's coming out of your mind, your colors, all your colors, it just, they, they're just, they're like lightning rods to me. When I look at your work, I just say, man, how do you d distinguish, you know, the depth, the darkness, the light? It's just so, it's just a beautiful, some of your work is just absolutely stunning. Oh, thank you. You know, uh, what I like the one, uh, I think there's the one where the, there's a guy on a motorcycle and he's being chased by cavemen. <laughs> and you know, and what I really like is the lady over the, over, uh, over the lap or over in the back, and her breast is showing, and I go. Wait, she's naked. Yes. Well, that's a. That's so. That that's it's just clever. A, clever. That's just a very. I mean, that that work is based on those very kinky, kind of playful, playful playboy caricatures from mm -hmm. the 1960s. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I love those caricatures, mm -hmm. and they're kind of silly, but silly in a good way. They're yes. funny. Yes. You know. So I thought of doing that uh, because the the. The guys, who, the guy who ordered that illustration was a band called Chernobyl. Mm -hmm. Cherno, not Chernobyl. Cherno, B I L L. Like from where? Like Billy the Kid. Oh, Billy the Kid. From right, where? Chernobyl. From Chile. It's a band. Okay. From Chile. They don't exist anymore. Mm -hmm. But uh, they wanted a cover with the character mm -hmm. Chernobyl, mm -hmm. which is kind of a this Billy the cowboy, kid. yeah, a post-apocalyptic cowboy, right? Mm -hmm. So I thought, what well, would be an interesting situation to have this post? apocalyptic cowboy without being too serious because I, I didn't want to go Mad Max and right. too dramatic and too depressing. Right. So I said, let's do something, uh, you know, funny, something comedic. Yes. So I thought of those old um, Playboy mm -hmm. caricatures, yes. right? Yeah. And full page. Uh, full page. Yeah. Play I can't remember the name of the artist. I mm -hmm. have a, a full stack of those. Somebody stripped those, those characters from Playboy magazines. It and took them out. And, and put them on eBay, and wow. I found a stack that's this thick of those caricatures. Really? Yeah, <laughs> I have it at home. Uh, so that was great inspiration. But I think the main inspiration for that album cover was a painting by Fran Frazetta of, uh, I guess, a French soldier from the 18th century Interesting. riding a horse with a naked girl. Interesting. I didn't know, I think it was a cover of a book. Mm -hmm. I don't know the sub what the subject was, but I always loved that painting, so mm. I kind of mix it up. With the motorcycle. The motorcycle. And you got that depth, and those guys are running behind it. It looks like they're just so pissed. You right. Know? Well, the, the, I think that the, um, also there's another inspiration for that cover, that movie, The Caveman, with Ringo Starr. Have you seen that one? Of course. Long time but ago, yeah. All the, all the cavemen are ugly and hairy, yeah. and, the, and, the, and the cave girls yeah. are all oh, like, a, like Raquel, uh, you know, Raquel Welch, Raquel and Welch yeah. with bikinis. Yeah. And I, I, I always thought that was funny. Why would cavemen be ugly and the, right, right. And the girls would be like top right. models, yeah, right? right? So I thought that was funny and just took some of that for, for that illustration. Interesting. So you're grabbing from different places just to, to, to create. I we all a, do, right? I was a very uh, TV-driven kid. Mm -hmm. I was I would spend most of my day in, in front of the TV when I was 10, mm -hmm. just watching old movies and cartoons and drawing. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, because you were drawing you didn't, Yeah, because you didn't, you didn't have, a, we didn't have internet. So I would either just draw live from the TV, like really quickly, or uh, later on, my dad got us a, a Betamax, so oh. we started recording and press pause. Mm -hmm. So you, <laughs> could, you could actually I could do draw, draw. Interesting. So that's how you started. Yeah, copying, ten years old. That's when you copying were cartoons. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So let's then I'm gonna, I'm gonna, let's change this a little bit. So you get all this thing. Do you go to Disneyland and all those places like that, or do you just you know? We just didn't have Disneyland in Chile in the 80s. 
We have smaller scale small, a little small, uh, like amusement carnival? park, like small, yeah, little... amusement parks mm -hmm. with mm -hmm. you know roller coasters and you know wheels and yeah. But this, Disney, that that was just something uh, we would that see on TV. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. It's far, far, far gone. So, in your future, you're going to continue. I know you're going to continue. What do you see yourself still doing? Still doing Same. fantasy? Same. You know what? Uh, artists, artists don't retire. No, they don't. They work until the very last day. Mm -hmm. And you can see that. I was just watching the other day uh, live uh, Instagram live with uh, Neil Adams. Neil mm -hmm. Adams, one of the classic Batman artists, mm -hmm. right, from the 70s. Mm -hmm. And he's still doing it. And he's like eight, in his 80s and still selling drawings. So mm -hmm. I guess that's me that's in you. 40, 40 years from now. So when you're watching, or you're watching on the internet or what, what are some of the shows that you watch now? What do you do? What do you do like for relaxation? You said you oh. you like to cook. You like to have downtime where you just listen to some good music. Same. Have you? Cartoons. So, cartoons. Yeah, so I've, they, I've been rewatching so yeah. the the Batman animated show. I've been rewatching the Thundercats mm -hmm. and new shows that I like. Mm -hmm. I love the, the Blood of Zeus. Zeus, Blood of Zeus, mm -hmm. in uh, Netflix. I love that show. Mm -hmm. I love Greek myth mythology. Yeah, most definitely. Uh, Jason and the Argonauts. Castlevania, mm -hmm. I love that show too, mm -hmm. and but mostly, uh, uh, yeah, those are the and DC Comics animated movies. Oh, most definitely. Batman, yeah. Superman, I love those. My my grandsons uh, are both big cartoon guys. They like to watch Batman and all of those guys that I grew up with, and it's kind of interesting because it's it's just it's just the line how it goes. I think cartoons are some of the best things that kids could have. They can mm -hmm. just you know they they get they get it. Um, you're also playing in a band. Yeah. How's that coming along? Well, we haven't played in a while. Mm -hmm. Hopefully, uh, we'll get some dates soon. Um, uh, the band is called Modern Day Cowboy. We played, we play um, Tesla songs from mm -hmm. the band Tesla. Mm -hmm. uh, um, small clubs, nothing That's major, right, but it's course. fun. It just keeps my phalanges uh, mm -hmm. from uh, rusting. Most definitely. So. Um, and you guys are you guys haven't started playing or have because of the no, pandemic? No, I don't think I think we had one date, mm -hmm. but I don't even remember if that that's still on. Maybe mm -hmm. it's canceled. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Hopefully mm -hmm. soon. I'll let you know. Let me know. <laughs> I like to definitely see you guys. So when you're when you're when we're gonna, we're getting close to uh, the end of it, is there anything that you'd like to say or plug or anything like that? Would you like to? You well, know. if people want to check my, my work, yes. they, they can go to my, my, my website. Mm -hmm. It's bergaminart.com. Mm -hmm. And I have all my, most of my artwork available as uh, prints. So you can frame, yes. decorate your home. Mm -hmm. um, and also, uh, I have a, an Instagram account, Cl Claudio Bergamin mm -hmm. Art, mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. uh, easy to find. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's where I stay more mm -hmm. uh, active. More you're active on Instagram than Facebook, actually. Your uh, your uh, uh, artwork on the internet is absolutely inviting. I have two of your pictures already, and I just got another one. So that makes three, and they hang up in uh, the mating hangs up in my front room, and that's the centerpiece of all oh, my awesome. pictures that kind of move. So the first thing yes, people see right when they walk in, that's where that's they great. see. And then if you look up, and then you walk down the hallway, and you look to your left, and there's you know fire in the sky. You know, and people are always commenting on that. And then I say, I know, the, I knew the artist, and I know the artist. And they go, No, no way. <laughs> I said, Yeah, maybe one day he'll come over when we start having parties again at ho the house. You know, come on over, whatever. People like to meet you because they they like Anytime. what you did. They they like what you did, especially mating. I think that's just. How did you figure that one out Which with one? the angels? With the angels, the the the. Oh yeah, the. Um, it's called the mating. The mating, yeah. yeah. That was a commission. Somebody ordered it. Somebody wanted to. Uh, they're not angels. They're. What's the name of the harpies? Oh, really? Yeah, harpies. So basically, uh, they're mating or about to mate. Yes. You know, so. Dramatic. You did it very dramatically. Right. Yeah. Right. I wanted to just look up and mm. just, I figured they would mate like flies, right? Mid fly and yeah, then yeah. Shh, go in a in a spinning to go down. Movement to go down. So, but th that's up to the imagination. I just put it there and you know uh, suggest mm -hmm. the mating. It's 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 a uh, it's totally a very dramatic picture, and it and it just 
just goes well with all the other pitchers that line up against it. But that pitcher's the most outstanding, and people always comment when they see that. They go, wow, that is really dramatic. And I go, that's a friend of mine did that. Yeah. So, thank you. Thank you. You know, uh, I want to thank you for coming. Oh, thank you for having me. Oh, you're just, you know what, you're, to me, man, you're, you're like, you're the essence of an artist that carries on. You carry the light. I look at your work and I'm like I, that bunny. Yeah, there you go. Then you're 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 a bunny. <laughs> but I want to thank you. And if we look at the camera, you want to say anything to anybody and stay well, people, and be good to each other. Amen. Peace and love to everybody. This is Carlo, uh, Claudio, and I, Gregor Correa. Thank you so much. Peace and love.